Hello friends, I hope you're all doing great. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's video, we are gonna be covering how you get perfect Pokemon in Pokemon's Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So a lot of you will already be aware of some of the breeding mechanics that we're going to be covering in today's video. But if you're not aware of them, don't worry, we're going to be covering absolutely everything you will need to know. So by the end of the guide, you're going to be able to go away and breed your own flawless IV competitive Pokemon. But before we get into the guide, what we need to do is pick up a few important items. Now, the first item that we're gonna have to locate is the Everstone. Now, the Everstone, when you give it to a parent Pokemon and put it into the daycare center, whatever nature is on that parent Pokemon will always be guaranteed to pass down to the egg Pokemon. To find the Everstone, you can find it in a number of locations around the Cinnaroo region one of those is by visiting the grand underground and then mining for the item now this isn't a guaranteed method because it may take you a very long period of time to get it it is an item that is available in the ground underground by mining but could take a long time to get but it is one method to get this item the other way to get the everstone and a guaranteed way to get it is by visiting route 217 once you're at this area you try and encounter a medicham now once you encounter or a Medicham, you catch it, then take it to Snowpoint City, visit this house, talk to this NPC who will offer you a trade for a Haunter. Now, this is probably the biggest meme in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because you're thinking when you get the Taunter traded, you're going to get a Gengar, but no, you actually get a Haunter. The bonus is though that the Haunter is holding an Everstone and that is primarily the main use of an Everstone to stop a Pokemon from evolving when it's holding it. But the other use is what we've already mentioned about passing natures down from a parent to an egg Pokemon. So this is a guaranteed way to get the Everstone. The next item we need is probably the most important one in this entire video and that is the Destiny Knot. The Destiny Knot can be found in Route 224 this is a route only accessible in the post game of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. You will need to have beat the Elite Four, obtain the National Dex, and this route off of the Victory Road will open up. You can then visit there and pick the Destiny Knot up. And you can also have the slim chance to pick it up with a pickup ability Pokemon if you've got it in your party when you end a battle. The Destiny Knot is so important because it is an item when you give it to a parent Pokemon and place it in the daycare center. When that Pokemon is in there, it will then take five random IVs from both parent Pokemon and then give it to the egg Pokemon. So for an example, you've got two Pokemon in the daycare center one with the Destiny Knot, both with very strong IV spreads. Now the Destiny Knot will pull five random IVs from both of these parents and pass them to the Egg Pokemon. Now the Egg Pokemon will have five of the inherited IVs from the randomly selected IVs from both parents and then the sixth stat is determined randomly from 0 to 31. So for the method of chain IV breeding in this guide, the Destiny Knot is that key item that we are needing. Next tool that we are gonna need access to is the IV Judge. You can unlock this again in the post game after you've beat the Elite Four by visiting the fight area, going up to the battle tower, talking to this NPC who will unlock the judge feature in your boxes. Now, when you're in your Pokemon boxes, you can hover over a Pokemon and you can press the plus button on your controller. It will change the screen on the Pokemon and you'll be able to view the stats or the IVs or a description of the IVs for that particular Pokemon. Now, if the description says best, that indicates that that Pokemon for that stat has an IV of 31. If the description is fantastic, it's an IV of 30. If the description is very good, it is an IV between 26 and 29. 
if the description is pretty good, it's an IV between 16 and 25. The description says decent, it's an IV between 1 and 15. And if the description says no good, it means that stat has an IV of zero. This is a really useful tool to check eggs once you've hatched them in this breeding process. The next item is an optional one, but it is one that will speed the whole process up for us. And that is the oval charm. The oval charm again is another post game item that you can obtain after beating the Elite Four, getting your national decks. If if you head to the Valor Lake front, which is the kind of hotel resort area, and head over to the swim pool, there'll be an NPC character in the pool. If you talk to them, it's actually Morimoto in disguise who will then challenge you to a battle. Once you beat him, he will then award you the Oval Charm. The Oval Charm increases the likelihood of eggs spawning from the old man when you've got two Pokemon in the daycare center. Another really useful thing to obtain is a Pokemon with the Flame Body ability. Having a Pokemon with the Flame Body ability in your party will reduce the number of steps required for an egg to hatch by up to half. And probably the easiest way to obtain a Flame Body Pokemon is by traveling to the fight area going to the Grand Underground from this area and then heading to the cavern which is half fire, half desert. And in this cavern, you'll easily be able to find Slugmas and Macargos both having access to that flame body ability. And finally, the next items are optional, but if you can only find dittos with very small amounts of flawless IVs, these items may be very helpful for you to do the IV chaining process. These are the power items. There are six power items that all when attached to a parent Pokemon in the daycare will guarantee that the IV that it's related to will always be passed down to the egg Pokemon. So unlike the Destiny Knot, which picks five random IVs from both Pokemon in the daycare center, the power item only guarantees a specific IV that it's related to passed down from the Pokemon that's holding it to the egg Pokemon. These six power items are the power antlet, which guarantees the speed IV from the holding parent Pokemon to the egg Pokemon. The power band, which guarantees that the special defense IV will be passed down to the offspring Pokemon. Power belt guarantees that the defense IV is passed down. The power bracer guarantees the attack IV is passed down to the egg. Power lens refers to the special attack being guaranteed to be passed down and the power weight guarantees that the HP IV will always be passed down to the egg Pokemon. All the power items can be obtained from the battle tower for 10 battle points. So that covers pretty much all of the items in pre rex that we're going to need before we start the breeding process. The next thing that we need to look at is obtaining a ditto with a high IV spread. Ideally we want a ditto with at least three perfect IVs to start this breeding process. But if you can only find a ditto with one or maybe two, perfect IVs, then don't worry, that will be enough to do this method. Now, Ditto is available in two areas within the Sunna region. It is available on Route 218 using the Poker Radar, which again is obtainable after the post game, after you beat the Elite Four, obtain the National Dex, Professor Ron will give you the Poker Radar, which you can then use to chain Pokemon in certain areas around the Sinnoh region. The other area where Ditto is available is in the Ground Underground, and you can visit Celestic Town, which will take you to the central area of the Ground Underground. And if you visit Star Gleam Cavern, that location you'll be able to find Dittos in. But the one drawback about hunting Dittos in the Underground is currently I'm not aware of any methods to increase the chances of catching a ditto with a high IV spread. I've tried putting different statues into my underground secret base. I've tried the Diglett run to increase those chances when they spawn in that cavern and none of it seems to yield any dittos with those flawless IVs that we're looking for. So the best method in this situation is always gonna be the, the Pokemon radar and chaining these dittos. And this is unfortunate because until we get access to Pokemon home, we won't have access to any outside resources aside from what we've got in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So we have to make do with what we've got right now for breeding purposes. Now, the other thing to mention about the Pokemon radar and chaining Pokemon is where you can reach a chain of 20 Pokemon and you will always guarantee that that Pokemon, that 20th Pokemon in the chain will always have a guaranteed 
flawless IV of one. When you hit a chain of 30 Pokemon, that 30th Pokemon will have a guaranteed two flawless IVs. And when you hit a chain of 40 Pokemon, it will have a guaranteed three flawless IVs but everything in between these specific numbers will not have a guaranteed perfect or flawless IV. So the main thing that you want to be doing in this process is trying to get to a chain of 40 dittos guaranteeing that ditto with three flawless IVs. And the other bonus about doing this process is by the end of that chain you're going to have a few boxes full of dittos and you should then have a ditto with every corresponding nature that's available in the game which will make using the everstone and getting that nature for the initial breedable pokemon very easy to obtain so far we have got the everstone we got the destiny knot we've got a flame body pokemon the oval charms activated the iv judge is activated and we've got our power items so we've got everything set as well as boxes full of dittos and a three iv ditto from using the poker radar now the next thing to do is decide what pokemon we want to breed now when deciding which competitive pokemon you want to breed before you start the breeding process it is worth checking if this pokemon has any egg moves that you want it to have and whether or not you want it to have its hidden ability or not because these are things to do before you start the iv chaining process you can check all these details out by checking the pokemon specific page on somewhere like cerebi or bulbapedia and just make sure that you check out those details and do this step before you jump into trying to get these flawless ivs so for this guide we're going to use a gibble as our example and we're going to be breeding it with our ditto that we have obtained from using the Pokemon radar and getting to a chain of 40. Now Gibble can be obtained in the Wayward Cave and that is a cave system which is north of Aubra City. So as you can see this is the Gibble that we captured from the Wayward Cave and if we check it against our judge function we can see it's got an IV spread of decent 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 very good decent very good. No flawless IVs there pretty bad IV spread in general hasty nature no good and sand veil which is fine so the idea here is to turn this gibble into a gibble with 31 ivs across the board except that special attack so five flawless ivs with an adamant nature now to do this what we can do is use four dittos that we've got access to and the fifth one that we will need for the adamant nature so here you go here's an adamant ditto unfortunately this one doesn't have any flawless ivs if it did obviously that would be a bonus for us to start this process so the first step for us is to visit salatian town this is where the pokemon nursery or the pokemon daycare is located and where we're going to be breeding our eggs now when we're at slow shield town you want to head over to this house right here this is the pokemon nursery and we want to go inside and approach the desk here but before we do we want to prepare our pokemon so we want to just come into our boxes make sure that you have your flame body pokemon at the top of your party in your party here and then the two pokemon that we're going to want to breed with now what we're going to do to start off with is get a gibble with an adamant nature to do this what we talked about earlier is use that everstone with a ditto with that adamant nature and put these two pokemon into the daycare you want to just speak to the lady and you want to just select the two pokemon that you want to breed so it'll cost you a thousand poker dollars and the lady will take the pokemon and you want to just come out of this room now this old man right here that we're circling around is the man that will give you the eggs when they are ready so for an egg to spawn you just need to just move around do a lot of steps and when an egg has spawned this old man will turn to face the road so you'll turn to face this area here and that's when you know an egg is ready to collect and as you can see the old man here is facing out so what we want to do is just speak to him and he will give us an egg he'll say that there's an egg ready and do we want it so we'll just take the egg and the next stage is to hatch this egg now there is a pocket tech app which you can use which is quite useful to count your steps so if you have that open in the corner you'll be able to gauge how many steps it takes to hatch this first egg and a quick tip for hatching eggs it is way quicker if you go round and round in circles rather than traveling up and down the route as you can see from this still here you're clocking up way more steps doing the circle method than the route method 
And as you can see, the gibble egg is eventually hatching. It takes over 5,000 steps for a gibble egg to hatch. So regretting picking this as an our, our example in this guide already, but nevertheless, the gibble has hatched. With the flame body Pokemon, it has half those steps that would be required. It would normally require 10,000 steps, so really saving you a lot of time in this process. And as you can see, the gibble that we've hatched out has got that adamant nature. So that is step one. So now we've got our adamant nature, we wanna just withdraw the Pokemon that we've currently got in the nursery. So we want to take the Ditto and the Gibble out of their boxes. And next we can start the IV chaining. So here is our hasty Gibble that we've just taken out of the box. Here is our Adamant Gibble. This is our Ditto with the Everstone. So step one is complete. We do have our Adamant Gibble. The next step is to try and transfer all of the flawless IVs from these four Dittos that we need onto a Gibble. So to do that, the, step, the first step is to choose a Ditto from our party. We're gonna pick this Ditto here. It has two flawless IVs. It has a HP and an attack flawless IV. You can see that there. This Gibble has no flawless IVs at the minute, although it does have a fantastic special defense. So we got lucky when we we're hatching that adamant one. And what we wanna do is we wanna give these Pokemon some items. So. The first thing we want to do is take the Everstone off the Ditto that we've just taken out and put it onto the Gibble. And then we want to give the Destiny Knot to this Ditto. So we'll give the Destiny Knot to the Ditto and then these two Pokemon are ready to go into the Daycare Center. And the idea is to try and get a Offspring Gibble with the Adamant Nature and a Flawless HP and Attack IV. So with the Pokemon in the daycare center, we just need to wait on the old man providing us with the eggs to hatch. We collect five eggs and then we start the kind of step process to hatching them and checking if the eggs that we have got any of those flawless IVs passed down from the ditto. Essentially at this stage, what we will be doing is cycling out the gibbles. So any gibbles that we get that are an improvement with the one currently in the daycare center will be cycling out until we have that HP and attack with those flawless IVs. So as you can see, one of our first breeds in this first batch of five eggs is an Adam and Nature Gibble. It has a flawless IV in its attack stats. So what we want to do, we weren't successful getting any other Gibbles in that first batch of five eggs with the HP and the attack IV being flawless. So we just go to the daycare and what we're doing is just cycling out the Gibble that we've got in there for the one that we've just hatched. So what we want to do is just switch items and then we can move this gibble which will then give us an increased chance to pull down both the hp and attack iv from the parenting pokemon and once we've replaced this gibble we want to just repeat the process collect the eggs hatch them and see if we have eventually got an egg that's inherited the flawless hp and attack iv so essentially at this step, what we're gonna to continue to do is cycle Gibbles in and out of the daycare center. Any Gibbles that we hatch that have a stronger IV spread than the one currently in the daycare center are gonna replace it. So we have those increased chances to eventually get a flawless IV spread. And at the same time, we will also be cycling the Dittos out with these Gibbles when we have achieved the flawless IV that's passed down from a particular Ditto onto the Gibble offspring. We then wanna replace that Ditto with with an alternative flawless IV that we will try then to pass down to the new offspring. And every time we do this, we are getting one step closer to getting that flawless IV spread. So we continue to do this cycling in and out of the gibbles and dittos and we take it step by step and it is a slow process but you will eventually get to a point where you've passed a flawless IV down for every single target stat that you're looking for. As you can see on your screen here we have two gibbles and they have a cross over flawless IV spread. So essentially what we can do is put these two gibbles into the daycare center, make sure that one of them has the everstone to pass down the nature and the other is holding the destiny not and then what we want to do is hatch eggs from these parent pokemon and hope that we get that randomized destiny not crossover with the flawless iv spread and what we can still do at this point in time is still keep cycling any better offspring gibbles that we get 
for the ones currently in the daycare center and doing this will increase our chances of getting that flawless IV spread even quicker. Now this step can take a long time or you can get lucky and it can take a very short amount of time. For fortunately for us and for this guide, we managed to hatch a flawless gibble on our first cycle after putting these two gibbles into the daycare center. So we were very lucky in getting that destiny knot combination of randomized IVs passed down to the egg Pokemon and this new offspring gibble as you can see as attached it has got that flawless IV spread with an adamant nature it has a 31 HP attack defense special defense and speed essentially making it a flawless breed this is our breeding guide you can adapt this method onto any breedable pokemon in brilliant diamond and shining pearl and don't worry if your initial pokemon doesn't have great ivs or a good iv spread as long as you've got those dittos that we showed you how to get in the early stages of this guide you're going to be able to adapt this method onto any breeding project that you wish it really is important to get a lot of dittos make sure you've got a lot of dittos with different iv spreads different perfect flawless ivs and those natures as well which is going to make passing them down to your breeding projects a lot easier so friends that wraps up our breeding guide i hope you found it useful if you have please consider dropping a like onto the video it really does help the video lets me know as well that it has been a good guide a useful guide and that you've got some benefit from it and if you have enjoyed it do consider hitting that subscribe button as well for more pokemon content on the channel thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day and i will see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye